Hello, everybody, uh, both here in the room, um, but also behind the screens uh, all over Europe. I don't know how many have joined up, but I hope a lot, because this forum really deserves it. Thank you very much to Team Tartu for inviting me to be here today. It's a great pleasure, uh, and it's actually my first time in uh, Tartu. <coughs> And it's not going to be the last time either, because uh, at least I now have put in my calendar that on the 27th of January 2024, I'll be here for the opening. And I can't wait. I don't know where Tartu ranges on the scale uh, in terms of uh, greening uh, in the area of arts and culture management, but I can say when it comes to organization, a beautiful professional setup, and uh, not to forget the great hospitality that I have enjoyed so far, um, Tartu uh, on a scale from 1 to 12 is 12 points. 12 points. Thank you very much. I'm um, a consultant, and uh, what I do, apart from being a consultant, was already uh, explained by you. Thank you very much. So I'll go straight um, to my presentation. But I'm afraid I'm going to be the boring guy in the room, because I don't have any exciting projects to present to you. But I'd like to try to um, explain a little bit about the framework, about the policies how policies are made uh, top-down, but also how it's actually possible for the cultural sector to also influence policy uh, bottom-up. Oh my God, that really sets the standard for my presentation. I assure you it looked perfect on my uh, mobile telephone when I was doing the presentation. But maybe there is also um, a message behind this blurry picture. The UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals um, against greening uh, of the cultural sector. So what do we actually mean when we talk about sustainability? Do we talk about just the UN Sustainable Development Goal 13, about climate action, what is it we talk about? And at what costs do we work on making our cultural events sustainable? Is it at the cost of health, physical, mental health? Is it at the cost of education, poverty, gender equality, and all the other sustainable uh, goals in the UN Charter? And where's culture anyway in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals? Nowhere, uh, specifically, anyway. Should it be number 18, maybe? Or should culture go across all the Sustainable Development Goals? But what I do know, even though I'm not an expert in sustainable development, nor in, in greening, uh, I do know that culture needs to go across uh, all the uh, sustainable development goals. The European Green Deal uh, you are uh, very familiar with, uh, that sets the goals for uh, greening uh, of Europe uh, before 2030, also has no mention of culture as such. The European Green Deal fits within the umbrella, if you imagine the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, whatever happens on EU level feeds into what has been decided on UN level. So the European Green Deal, of course, is a part of that. But as I said, culture is missing, and we already heard uh, my colleague Ruth Rothstein explaining to you about the European Bauhaus. Um, that is 
a way of making um, the European Green Deal more tangible, uh, putting a human face to it. So making us understand that sustainability can be beautiful, um, that good design can improve our lives, and that sustainability is also about a more beautiful and humane world. So we all need to creatively rethink the way we do things. We need to not just think about our own sector and our own geography, but we have to think across, both across different sectors and across territories, and to have a more holistic approach to the way we work with sustainability. But where's culture in the EU? Uh, when it comes to sustainability. Culture kind of sits um, within its own unit uh, and it's directed by all of the 27 member states in the Council of Ministers. And every third year they draft what's called a work plan for culture. Um, so this is just an extract of the uh, main page, if you want, of the work plan for culture, where it says that in culture, this is what the EU will be working on in the next three years, or this is rather in the past three years, because the new work plan for culture is being drafted at the moment, and it's actually possible to influence um, what's going to be written in this uh, new work plan for culture. And I can assure you that sustainability will be a big part. Most of you will be aware of all the different EU programs available for um, doing projects with partners around Europe. And all of the programs, no matter which program you choose, you'll find that you have to adhere to the, to the structures, to the political framework of where the EU wants to go, namely greening Europe before 2030. So all these programs are a kind of a carrot um, and it makes you go in the right direction if you want the money. So as a cultural actor, um, how do you do it and what do you do? Like, how do you actually uh, go about uh, greening or working sustainably with your, uh, with your cultural projects? You can go off and just be proactive and do things, but you can also try to learn from others, uh, not having to invent the wheel and to try to somehow fit into a mold, uh, join up with others, and collectively work at uh, sustainable changes. And what I definitely can recommend is that you get out of your local environment, you get out to have a look into the world, but also to when you're up there in a helicopter perspective, look down on, um, on your area from outside with a fresh set of eyes, because often we then discover new things. I also encourage you to really link up with networks all across Europe, um, because together you are stronger. And to not just wait, for policy to trickle down to where you are, to trickle from the UN level to the EU level, to your national level, to your local level, to wherever you are, and to simply follow uh, where the money is for projects because they are the ones to lead you in the right direction. It will be too late to do that. You will need to be much more proactive but you can have influence um, through the European 
uh, networks. And one of the platforms where you really can have a lot of influence is um, Voices of Culture, a project um, that is owned by the European Commission, implemented by the Goethe Institute, a platform that is given by the European Commission where the cultural stakeholders and the uh, policy makers get together and discuss what's necessary uh, and what's meaningful to do together. Um, the policy makers learning what the world looks like from the point of view of a cultural stakeholder. It's of course a very small scale um, impact that Voices of Culture has because it does not involve everyone. Uh, I don't know if anyone in, in the room or online has taken part in a Voices of Culture um, structured dialogue. Are there any hands? Yeah? Um, so you know a little bit about what it's about, yes. Uh, and, but, but the idea uh, with Voices of Culture is something that could be scaled up. It's something that you can take on board yourself. In a city like Tartu, you could decide that uh, we have our own Voices of Culture. We have uh, once a year uh, an event like this where you uh, have brainstorming sessions with the cultural se uh, sector about certain topics and then you team up with your politicians to, um, to develop ideas and to ensure that you have the right framework for your, um, for your sector. Apart from Voices of Culture, there is uh, another platform that was created in connection with uh, uh, COVID-19. It's called uh, Creatives Unite. And it's a platform where cultural uh, stakeholders from all over the world, for that matter, but mainly from, from Europe, because it's, it's uh, a European uh, interest uh, framework, um, can, can join and, uh, and learn about what goes on uh, in the cultural field across Europe, where you can also post information about uh, what you are doing. So back to Voices of Culture. So once... Uh, on a European level, the cultural stakeholders and the European Commission people have been together and discussed uh, a certain topic. Then what happens? Well, first of all, the result uh, of the work is published in a report and distributed widely so that others can learn from, uh, from what has happened. But also the uh, European Commission ensures that um, the member states are informed about what happens and also take part in a discussion on that topic with the input from the sector. Um, but then there is a missing link. There's a missing link between the national level and what happens on ground level. And um, it's a, an area where we can all work together to try to find the missing link by setting up our own systems for trying to influence what happens on the policy levels all the way from, from your level, from municipal level, all the way to the EU, even to the UN. So engage in networks uh, and networks of networks locally and internationally as much as you possibly can. Because through networking, you gain new knowledge new insights, um, you acquire new skills, you learn to navigate in an international culture, you make new friends, uh, you have a stronger uh, bargaining power when you want to achieve something. And in terms of advocacy, uh, you also have a lot of strengths. So hurry up and go out there and do lots of networks and link up with Europe. Thank you.